So we're going to graph g of x, and then we're going to describe the transformations from the parent function f of x equals the absolute value of x. So anytime I'm graphing an absolute value function, the first thing I want to do is find the vertex. Then what I want to do is figure out whether or not it is going to be a v-shaped graph or upside down v-shaped graph. And then last, what I want to do is figure out the slope. And there's going to be a positive and negative slope. So I really just need the absolute value of that slope. And that number is just going to be the number that's being multiplied by either x or the absolute value symbol. So in this case, to find the vertex, to find my x component, it's whenever x, this expression, x minus 1, is equal to 0. So I'll set x minus 1 equal to 0. And you could do that in your head. But if you add 1 on both sides, you get x equals 1. So the x value of my vertex is 1. And then the y value of my vertex is always the number that's being added to the absolute value expression. So in this case, it's positive 3. If I, said, um, if I saw a minus sign, it'd be minus 3 or negative 3. So my vertex is 1, comma 3. So I write that as an ordered pair. So once I find my vertex, I can plot that. So I'll plot 1, comma 3. And then the next thing I want to do is figure out if it's V-shaped or upside down V-shaped. Okay. Well, the way I do that is very simple. I just see, is there a negative sign on the outside of my absolute value expression? And there is one here, so that means it's going to be an upside down V. So I know that it's going to be pointing down like this rather than opening up like this. Okay. Now the last thing, which I forgot to write down, is the slope. Okay. Now the slope is going to be positive and negative because it's going to go in both directions. I know it's going to be upside down V, so I just need to figure out what that number is. Well, in this case, I have this 2 that's being multiplied by my absolute value expression. Okay, So that is going to be my slope. It's going to be plus or minus 2. Uh, on the rare chance that you have a number outside and inside here, you would just multiply the absolute values of those numbers. So if it was a 2 here and then a 2 here, I do 2 times 2 is 4. Um, but more common, you'll just see one number either on the inside or the outside. Uh, so now I can easily graph this. So I know it's going to be uh, going like a V-shaped, upside down. So here I want to go down to left one and down to right one. And I can keep going with this pattern until I can't fit any more points on the graph. Now I'll draw my rays from my vertex that goes through the points. The last step is to describe the transformations from the parent function. Well, so if we treat this like we're in vertex form, and this actually is in vertex form, it's really easy to describe the transformations. Okay? So the first thing I want to do, and I'll make some space here, maybe zoom out a bit. The first thing I want to do is describe the a value. And if you don't know what I'm talking about for vertex form, vertex form is y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k, where h and k are this is the x value of the vertex, y value of the vertex. Okay? So first thing I want to do is start with my a. Uh, number here. So my A not only has the reflection, but it also has any vertical stretch or shrink. Now, I'll start with the reflection first, but it doesn't matter which one you start out of those two. And basically, is there a reflection in the x-axis? And since this is an upside down V, yes, there is. So my first transformation is going to be reflection in the x-axis. Okay. The next thing I want to do is figure out if there's a vertical stretch or a vertical shrink, or nothing. Okay, So in this case, the slope is not 1 or negative 1. So that means that there is a vertical stretch or shrink. And in this case, it's going to be a vertical stretch because my slope is larger than 1. If my slope was a fraction in between 0 and 1, like 1 half, then it would be a vertical shrink. So this 2 right here means I have a vertical stretch with a scale factor of 2. And then last, the reason why I like doing it this way, last, the translation is just going to be the vertex. So my vertex is 1, 3. That just means I translate one unit right and three units up. So we've successfully graphed g of x and then describe the transformations from the parent function f of x equals the absolute value of x. So now we're done with this one. 
for this one, we're going to graph h of x and then describe the transformations from the parent function f of x equals the absolute value of x. So it's a very similar type of question that we had in the last example. But notice, now I have a coefficient that's on the inside of my absolute value rather than the outside. Okay? So there's multiple ways to do this, but I'm going to show you the best way that I think and the easiest way that I think there is to do this. Okay? So first thing we're going to do is find our three things. Vertex, V or upside down V, and then the slope. So once again, to find the vertex, you just set this entire expression inside the absolute value equal to zero. So I'll do that. One half x plus one equals zero. Subtract one on both sides. So I get one half x equals negative one. Multiply both sides by the reciprocal of one half, which is two. So I get x is equal to negative two. The x component of my vertex will be negative 2. And the y component, if you remember, is always going to be the number that's being added to this absolute value expression. In this case, I have a negative number, negative 3. So that's my y component of the vertex. My vertex is the ordered pair negative 2, comma, negative 3. So I'm going to plot that point right now. Negative 2, negative 3. Now, I want to figure out is if my graph is going to be a v shape or an upside down v. Well, there's no negative on the outside, and that's all I need to check for, so it's going to be a regular v. And then all I need to do is figure out the slope. Well, the slope is just going to be the number that's being multiplied by x. In this case, that's 1 half. So it's going to be positive 1 half and negative 1 half. So I'll write that down here. And then from my point, I can just go, I know it's going to be v-shaped, so I can just go up 1, right 2, and continue doing that, and then up 1, left 2, and continue doing that. So that's up one, right two, and then up one, left two, okay? So now I'm gonna draw my rays from my vertex that goes through these points. All right, and then last, I just need to describe the transformations from the parent function. Well, you could do it the normal way, the, the way that the function looks like, and in that case, you'd basically do um, your horizontal translations first, then figure out if there is a reflection in the y-axis, which there's not here, then figure out your horizontal stretches of shrink, which there's a horizontal stretch of a scale factor of 2, then figure out if there's a reflection in the x-axis, which there is not because there's no negative sign out here, then figure out if there's any vertical stretch or vertical shrink, which there's not because there's no number being multiplied by this absolute value expression, and then you end with the uh, translations that are vertical. Now, I think that is way too much. I think that's uh, a bit overkill. Um, and there's a faster way to do it. And the way to do it is to think of everything, once again, like it's in vertex form. Because you can rewrite any absolute value function, including this one, in vertex form, which, once again, is y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. Okay? So all I need to do is describe my transformations based on this, and that's still accurate. It's still a way to get from my parent function to the function that I just graphed. Okay? So... First thing I'm going to start with, once again, is is there a reflection in the x-axis or not? Since there's no negative out here, and since it's a regular v-shaped instead of upside down v, there's no reflection in the x-axis, so I don't need to write anything there. The next question I want to ask myself, because I'm still dealing with this a term, is is my slope equal to anything but 1? And my slope is not equal to 1, it's equal to 1 half. Uh, so that means that there has been a vertical stretch or shrink. And since 1 half is in between 0 and 1 and not greater than 1, it's going to be a vertical shrink. So I can think of this as a vertical shrink. And the benefit of thinking of everything as a vertical shrink is your scale factor is just the slope. If you remember, the horizontal uh, scale factor is the reciprocal of the uh, slope. But in this case, it's just a vertical shrink with a scale factor of 1 half which is my plus or minus my slope, okay? So I've done that, and now all I have to do is deal with my translations, which, remember, if you do it this way, your translation is always going to be the vertex. In this case, negative 2 comma negative 3. That's just left 2 down 3. So I'm going to write translate 2 units left and 3 units down. So I think this is the best way to not only graph absolute value functions, but describe their transformations from the parent function.